Hello and welcome. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to make authentic Mexican beans in a pot. And for those of you that want to learn how to make refried beans, which we've been getting asked a lot about our beans, uh, go ahead and stick around to the end. Before we get started with our delicious beans, make sure to rinse them. Make sure to look through your bag that there's no rocks, no stones, and that's perfect for uh, the Views Club Junior when you have to clean the beans. So go ahead and pour that into a bowl. Cover the beans in hot water. Allow your beans to set for 10 to 15 minutes. What this is gonna do, it's gonna give you the most tender, soft, juicy beans, and it's gonna prevent all those gassy bears. And after 10 to 15 minutes, you wanna strain your beans and make sure not to rinse them anymore. Just keep them right here because they're gonna go straight into our pot. We're gonna be cooking our beans in our Mexican clay pot. We get asked a lot about Mexican clay pots and you're in luck. If you can't go back to the motherland, we're gonna link a reliable company um, that will sell you these magical little gems right here. Add your salt and one whole onion. Set your burner on a medium high heat and bring everything up to a boil. After you've brought it to a boil, you're gonna place your lid and you're gonna continue to cook on a low heat for an hour and a half to two hours. At an hour and a half, we're gonna come and check our pot and see how our beans are doing. And if you never had the privilege to cook with any of your family members, like grandmother, mom, this smell is going to bring you those memories. And I'm glad you were talking to our friends, Cloud, because I want to share something that I do with you guys. I use some parchment paper. You can use uh, foil as well. And I just place it here so that I have enough of my steam that stays in because these pots do have the little holes right here and I lose a lot of uh, water that way. So I just place it like that. And after an hour and a half, our beans are ready. They're nice and soft. And when you soak them, you see how quickly they cook and they're really soft. Um, before we get started on our refried beans, let me show you how our family likes to enjoy whole beans when they're freshly made out of the pot. In this plate, I have tomato, onion, and cilantro, and I'm just gonna mix it right up. And next, we add our pico de gallo into our bowl of beans. And these are those dishes that the kids don't really wanna eat but they end up eating it because it's so good and then especially because we're gonna have a tortilla next to it. And they end up loving it. <laughs> yes, and for those of you that love queso fresco, your queso cotija, your favorite cheese, you're gonna add some of that in your bowl. For those of you that like your spice, you can use your serrano, you can use an habanero and sprinkle it right on in and you can even squeeze a little bit of lime if you'd like. Say, ah! Per cup of beans that I make, I tend to use half of a medium to small onion. Oh, look at that, it's like French. Cute. You gave it curtain bangs. I did, <laughs> I did. You know, to avoid the crying, you can you can cut them right by the stove or put glasses on. Yes, but then our <laughs> friends, but then our friends can't get the best view so oh that's if, right this is a cooking show <laughs> sorry a cooking show friends <laughs> if you're gonna chop your onions make sure to chop them right next to your burner i don't mean on it right next to where you keep your um your ladles your spoons and that's gonna avoid you guys crying because apparently i thought i wasn't jealous and there's a saying in spanish that if you cry when you slice onions it's because you're a very jealous person oh boy and i don't know i'll let you guys know in the future <laughs> To season your refried beans, you have choices, just like everybody else. So for us, we love onions and we love uh, serrano. The best part is that you get to pick the spice level. So if you want to omit the spice, just keep it to the side. Authentic beans require lard. You can use your rendered pork fat with all the juicy drippings in there or you can use your store-bought lard. Some of you like to use a shortening, vegetable shortening, you can do that. But if you don't feel comfortable using one of these, you can use some oil, which I use often, but currently our family is enjoying uh, the authentic way lately. What's your opinion on garlic? I think it's great. If you like it, add it in here. 
cool. And I know what's going to happen after we talk about lard and bacon grease and all that good stuff is that people are going to say that it's bad for you. Um, there's a lot of things that are bad for you, but I think everything in moderation is great. And if you're having lard in your diet and you're consuming more fast foods and that type of meals, then yeah, probably stay away from the lard. But if you balance out more of whole foods, which Mexican food tends to be that way, authentic Mexican food, um, you guys should be, should be doing great. But if you're combining uh, Mexican Americanized food, then you guys do need to watch it with this. Yeah, I was going to say that we were raised to use every part of the animal, and that includes the fat. Yeah, and in our culture, we have our teas, we have our drinks, we have a balance of our food the, that helps eliminate this. I mean, I, I, you guys, it's right before your eyes. You see what I eat, and I'm not, um, I'm, not, I'm not excessively overweight. I might be like about five pounds overweight, but I'm, I think I'm doing okay. Set your burner on a medium heat and add your desired amount of lard or oil that you're working with. Add your onions and your serrano to your pot and coat with the oil. Uh, continue to cook for about two, two and a half minutes until they're nice and soft. And make sure not to burn this part. If you burn the onions or anything at this moment, you're gonna have to start over. After about two and a half minutes, when you see that your onions are nice and soft, you're gonna start adding your beans. I'm gonna use about a cup, a cup and a half of beans with our broth. I guess we're going with two cups, friends. Place your burner on a low heat and start mashing. I know you're using a masher, but our family are no strangers to using a cup or a bottle or other devices. Or a blender. <laughs> or a blender, <laughs> that's right. I'd like to know what everyone else is using to mash their beans. Or if, they, if you've ever had to use something else until you got right with your money and got yourself a masher. And hey, sometimes you can be right with your money and still not have a masher. <laughs> right? <laughs> Once you mash your beans, you want to check for salt content. And if you need a little bit more, go ahead and add your salt. And I'm using salt flakes. I'll link them in the description for you. And some of you might think that your beans are ready, that these are refried beans. They're not. Our family likes them just like this. But I'm going to show you how to make them refried. It means you fry them two times. So we're gonna continue to cook our beans until they're not so um, so wet, and then we're gonna refry. After four minutes on a medium low heat, you're gonna hear the beans are drying up. They're speaking to you. They're speaking to you. I'll be quiet so you guys can hear. Hear that? And you can see just by me Pulling them back with a spoon, you can see that they're dry. So this is not something you want to do on a um, pan like that doesn't work. You know what I mean? It doesn't work that everything sticks to it. You don't want to do that because you end up having a burnt bean smell in your house and you're not going to be in a good mood. This will take you about, I want to say four to five minutes to get to the dryness that you need. And that's when you want to add your lard. Mm -hmm. This is the pivotal point in the transitioning of the beans for you to add the lard. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, so go ahead and add your lard, and you're going to need a decent amount. If you want these babies to shine, you got to add a lot of lard. <laughs> hey, we didn't make up the rules. We're just following them. You want it authentic, here you go. Well, the rules for lard, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and stir that quickly. And once you add the lard at this point, you can smell the beans smell different. They smell a little bit more savory. They do. Once you've combined your lard into your beans, you're gonna cook them again for another two and a half to three minutes. And we are gonna continuously uh, stir periodically, if that makes sense. So give it a little stir like this. And then I'll let it set for about 10, 15. 30, 40 seconds. You guys, you know what you're doing. It's your house. <laughs> it's your kitchen. When the beans are blowing you kisses, it's time to stir. <laughs> okay. That's a good tip, Cloud. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Or are they whistling at you? I don't know. Well, we have a saying in Spanish, que está tirando peditos. So, and that's what's happening. If you guys know what that means, let us know in the comments. <laughs> you're so nasty for Oh, it's true. I mean, it's beans. I didn't want to, but somebody has to. Hasta las mejores familias, mija. 
<laughs> I'm so happy that you're still here paying attention. I'm going to show you when your refried beans are ready. You see how smooth it is at the bottom? I do. Amazing. So when we did them prior, it was really dry here, remember? Mm -hmm. So you'll see that the beans move along where your spoon goes, your beans go in a non-runny way, in a non-dry way. And guess what, amigos? And boom, done! Our refried beans are ready to serve. As always, my sister Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you guys. We're so proud of each and every one of you that's cooking for your family. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios!